making the not so obvious obvious. This video is part of Shut Up and Shoot, that famous ebook, you know, the one you should be getting now. Okay, so welcome back for part two of processing a time lapse JPEG image sequence. Now that you've learned how to open up a JPEG sequence using the Adobe RAW processor, and we have this file here of images, which is going to create a wonderful time lapse. And that's typically the intent of these kinds of sequences. Uh, I want to show you what you can do with such time lapses. So basically, if uh, we want to create a variety of footage in different formats, like I have here, already loaded up on Pond5, one of my favorite agencies, you can see that from the same clip series or image series, I have a variety of formats generated. So I have a 30p close-up, and the reason I can do a close-up and it stays super crisp is simply because we are shooting in a high resolution format 5184 by 3456 and I'm going to show you how that happens so that you can zoom in then here's the counterpart which is the wide shot of the same clip and then we have different formats here's a 2k film cinema film 24p here is a 4k 24p so you can see we're going to get up to 4K, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So in any case, uh, well, let's talk about resolutions real quick. I am going to show you a little sh screenshot here of my website, one of my websites called stockfootage.vadervideo.com. And here you will find under Tech Info, Digital Cinema Formats and these are actually output formats and it kind of graphically shows what that looks like so 4k 2 to 1 is very large and then here's your 1080p this is your standard high definition and then the old 720p which is also considered high definition but it, uh, it's it's a little bit of a smaller format great by the way a great format to use for things like youtube etc because they crunch those files nicely. Uh, in any case, so here is the different formats. So you can see, I happen to like the Sony projector format, the 4096 by 2160. But uh, there's also your film, 35 millimeter film, 4096 by 3072, and so on and so forth. And then of course, the digital television formats, four by three, which is what we were using for many many years and now we have the 16 by 9 and there's your 720p 1280 by 720 which is basically this guy and then many of the newer televisions are actually going to the 1920 by 1080 which is the larger format so as television screens get larger you're st going to start seeing more resolution i uh have read and seen that uh, there are even 2k and 4k televisions coming to market so it's going to be exciting all right enough of that so what do i do how do i take this file and make it worthy of what i need we did the interpret footage we changed the main to ntsc and what this means is assume this frame rate this is the actual frame rate that's used in the ntsc standard so if you have a really long excessive clip obviously this is a little bit a fraction less than 30 frames per second so it will drop frames if necessary in any case i want to have 24p and what if i wanted to create some footage for pal which is 25p so what i can do here i'm just going to first of all by just hitting enter on the file name i'm going to name this and that's if I can spell correctly 20.29.97 P just so that I know now all I'm gonna do is hit control D 
and that's going to duplicate and I'm going to do it one more time and now we have three files except first of all I'm going to rename this to 25p and all I need to do and this is what you're gonna watch right now it says 12 seconds and 22 frames but now I'm gonna to go to interpret footage I'm gonna to go to main and I'm gonna change this to 25 frames per second because that's the PAL standard and now you'll notice it changed it to 15 seconds and 7 frames so After Effects is very smart about this it knows what it's doing you don't have to worry as long as you get that input or the uh, incoming version settings correct you'll be good to go and now we're gonna do the same thing here except we're gonna make this film so that would be 24 frames per second and now I need to go again right click interpret footage go to main and we're gonna change that to 24 so now I have three actual video files with three different frame rates of the same footage and that's a great start but we're not done yet now comes the fun part I need to convert these into compositions that I can manipulate so the way to do that is I can either create a composition and enter all this information that matches the sizes and the frames and the time and that takes long it's easier to just grab this drop it onto your composition icon and now it's gonna load that sequence into a composition so here we are we have a full composition and just so that you can see here's the very first frame and now I'm going to move the cursor to the very last frame and give After Effects a couple of seconds it needs to process but now you can see what's gonna happen in this time-lapse so this is the last frame and here's the first frame last frame first frame and so over that 12 seconds plus it's going to slowly show these blossoms open up and that's what we call a good time-lapse that's a really cool thing alright so I have one more problem here this is still in the format or resolution of the actual images shot so I need to change that and I need to change that to something that is usable for production so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna use a thing called transform and basically in this transform we need to make it match the composition somehow but before we can do that I need to first of all set the composition settings so first of all I'm going to name this composition and I'm gonna call it 30p HD okay and for me I know that this is gonna be NTSC because it's 30p which is a common terminology even though it means 29.97 but now I need to change the composition settings to make sure that it's correct to match that so I go into composition settings by right clicking on the composition and here we have a bunch of presets and these presets are covered in another video on how to make these presets many of them come standard already with After Effects but I've added a couple I've created for example the 2k and the 4k according to the standards that I like but these are standard right here so we have HDTV 1080 29.97 which is your standard 1080p if I set that it now takes it and sets the resolution to 1920 by 1080 and we still have 12 seconds and 22 frames and notice I haven't had to calculate anything Adobe did this for me already it knows the length all I did now is change the resolution and so here we go and now all of a sudden we have an extreme close-up and there's a reason for that we didn't change the image size all we did was change the composition size so the image size is still here so what this means is I can literally start moving this around and it might take a couple seconds because it's got to think here we go come on After Effects alright so in After Effects we can start moving around and 
And if you remember this image here, that if, if you remember looking into this frame here, and it's similar to this. So, so we have this little window inside a big picture, okay? Think about that concept for a second. We have an extremely large image, but we only need this portion of it. So this is how I would do my close-up. So let's just say this is the close-up. I'm going to go back, fit it up to 100%, so now you can see. But that's a little bit on the soft focus part because I used a shallow depth of field on the lens. This was a 50 millimeter prime. So I'm going to grab this because it's a little sharper, it's a little crisper, and this is going to become an actual piece of footage. So what am I going to do? I'm going to rename this and call this CU for a close up. All right, so now we have our first composition ready to roll. Now I want to make some more and this time I am going to, well, yeah, let's make a second close-up. So if we go into this uh, second comp, open that up, double click on it so that you can work with it. And now I can, uh, for example, maybe grab this section. Looks a little bit different. So now I have a second composition, i.e. a second piece of footage ready to go. I'm going to do another duplicate. Except now I am going to rename this and I'm just going to call this HD wide. All right, so we have HD wide, double click. And now what I'm going to do is I need to shrink down that big image. Remember, we have a big image way out here because I've moved it. I can move it around again, but I want it to fit. So there's two ways you can do this. There's the not so easy way which is you grab one of the handles any one of these little squares on the box and start shrinking it but as you notice you can also distort so what you need to do is hit the shift key while you do this and it will keep the proportions correct and you can shrink it down to make it fit although you'll be spending a lot of time doing that because you'll have to zoom in and zoom out instead I'm going to show you a quick shortcut just go to transform and say fit to comp width. So now we know we have a 1920 by 1080 comp. We've just shrunk down the image to that comp width. And I can also rearrange or pick and slide it a little bit. As a matter of fact, you could do a tilt with some keyframes, or I can just frame it a little bit differently for the purpose of this. So I don't want to cut off those blossoms at the top. I, I like those at the top. We'll go into 100% just to make sure we're not too far and get it right up to the edge and there we go now we have a nice clean wide shot now i can duplicate this again and you can see i can do all kinds of things now i can do for example a high definition vertical version and now how do i do that well this gets a little trickier because here you have a couple of options to work with and the first one if I right click and by the way all these things that I'm doing if you open up the composition and look at the transform area you can see that the scale is 37 percent that happened because I did a scale up here through transform by fitting to comp width but now we're gonna do something crazy because it's gonna become a vertical so I need to rotate this 90 degrees so I can type in 90 degrees here or I can right click and do a transform rotation here. Same thing. It's already 90 degrees. But now I need to get this guy to fit again. So I grab the handle. Remember hold down the shift key. And now I usually go over just a little bit. Just a teeny bit and then frame your shot the way you like it that looks cool i like this flower right here this blossom and now we have a vertical so there's your first four comps just for hd so that would be four pieces of footage now we can go into the 24p for example but i'm not done yet with the 2997 what if i wanted a 2k or a 4k drop it down throw it into a composition 
open it up it's now down here now I'm gonna rename this first hedgehog we'll call this 2k 30p now I'm just gonna set the composition settings to my preset 2k video I call it 2k video because it's following the NTSC standard it's not following the film standard still 12 seconds and 22 frames still 29.97 frame rate but it's now 2048 by 1080 and so if I look at this piece of footage we're at 100% we're zoomed in but if I make this match and I go transform fit the comp width it actually will fit that correct 2048 and you'll see this is a little bit wider than a uh, 1080p actually how about this one or should I go let's go to the wide oh that's my my vertical and kind of that's kind of good that this happened because you want to make sure <laughs> that's my wide this is my vertical so I'm going to rename these and I'm just going to call this wide one because you can't have the same name. I'm going to call this vertical. So you just learned and just saw that uh, <laughs> vertical that you need to really pay attention to make sure and open up each one of these comps to make sure they are what they are. So there's my 30p wide, here's my 2k, and you'll see that it's a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to do the same thing, and I can either drop a new one down, or I can just duplicate the 2k, and call this 4k, 30p, open it up, set the composition settings to 4k, and you'll notice that it's pretty shrinky now. This is the old 2K, and we have a lot more space to work with. So again, I need to just simply say go and fit it to comp width. Now, you can only do this to 4K if you have the resolution. Don't try to take footage or a frame size or an image size that's smaller than 4K and expand it out. All you're gonna do is get a lot of pixelated garbage. It's not gonna look pretty. So make sure your resolutions are higher or equal to the largest size footage that you want to create. So the same process applies if I go into the 25p and now I've got the new comp and I can say uh, hedgehog 25 p and then just for my own reference I put PAL because that's the European standard and again it's thinking because it just had to rearrange the number of uh, frames composition settings make sure you select the right one here's HD TV it's still 1920 by 1080 but it's 25 frames per second and so on and so forth and now I can make this again transform fit the comp width I think you get the idea at this point so stay tuned and we're gonna go to the next segment which is how do we batch process this stay tuned thanks for watching <laughs>